Hello and welcome to this clip having a look at titrations and percentage uncertainty. We're going to go through a structure calculation question and provide some tips and hints as we go. So although there's quite a lot of information there, you've got to be a bit careful about when in the question you use it. So going towards the bottom where the first instruction is, complete the table by adding the titers to the table. Looking at the way that they've recorded the readings, they're all to the nearest 0.05 centimetres cubed. So it's very important to remember that when you're actually working out the titers. So if you work them out in the right way, those are the numbers you'll get. Obviously, they're just the final and initial readings by difference. But what's quite interesting is if you put the numbers through a calculator, it doesn't put in the two decimal places or to the nearest 0.05. So you have to actually remember to do that because the calculator won't do it for you. Simply putting down 24.3 because that's what it says on the calculator screen is not going to get you this mark. So there's a little bit of agency there for you. So then taking those numbers, they want you to calculate the mean titer of HCl to the nearest 0.05. So two things to think about here. It means using the two concordant titers that agree within plus or minus 0.10 centimeters cubed. And then thinking about what they actually put down in the question. There was a little hint there for you to remember to apply that when you're working out your titers yourself. So obviously the two that we want are the 24.20 and the 24.30. You ignore the 23.85 because it doesn't agree within 0.1 centimeters cubed. So just take those two, add them up and divide by two, and that gives you 24.25. So the next part is calculating the concentration. I need to give your answer to three significant figures. So whenever I see this, I advise people to just put three SFs down at the bottom next to the answer line. It's just, it's just a reminder to yourself, really, so you don't forget it. So because you're working out a concentration and you're going to need to use moles, I always use the data moles equation moles answer technique. So I'm going to collect all the things that I need from earlier in the question, including my own calculation of 24.25. And if I rewrite the equation across the top there and highlight it, I can put the information that I have for each of the reactants underneath them. So for example, for sodium carbonate, I have 25 centimeters cubed as the volume and concentration is 0 0.150. For my hydrochloric acid, I only at this point know it's 24.25, but they want you to work out the concentration because you can see that at the bottom. So therefore, what we need to do is work out the moles of whatever we're able to. So in this case, that's going to be Na2CO3. So the volume is converted to decimeters cubed and then times by 0 0.150 which gives you 3.75 times 10 to the minus 3. So if you look at the equation, you can see that the stoichiometry or mole ratio between sodium um, carbonate and HCl is 1 to 2. So you have to double that number to get the number of moles of HCl. I'm underlining the things that I'm actually working out so that the examiner's um, attention is drawn to them. Those are the marking points in the mark scheme. So working out concentration, you just do N over V, obviously, and you divide your number of moles of HCl by the actual volume, which we worked out to be 24.25 a little bit earlier. And obviously, you need to convert that to decimeters cubed, hence why I'm dividing it by 1,000. So coming out of the calculator, that gives you that rather large number, starting with 0 0.309. But they want it in three significant figures form, so I have to round it to 0 0.309. Next part of the question looks at percentage uncertainty. So what we need to do is remind ourselves what the volumes measured are and how we obtain them. So for the pipette, there was a single reading taken of 25 centimetres cubed. So you only need to apply the uncertainty once. But for the burette, there are two readings taken to arrive at the same um, measurement of 24.25 centimetres cubed. It was a measurement by difference. So this time the uncertainty that's provided is applied twice. So the uncertainty is divided by the size of the measurement and then multiplied by 100. So in the Pipette's case, that's going to be 0.16%. And in the Burette's case, that's going to be 0.41. Notice how I've multiplied 0.05 times 2. So this is because I've applied the uncertainty twice. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this one. Um, thanks for listening as always. Until next time, see you soon.